Now talk about pitch in the group. Um, here's just a little bit of nerdy questions. What A did you turn to? Tune to? Oh, I actually don't even know. Uh, it wasn't like a, they didn't have a decision of. They did, but I just didn't, I never even asked. You know, there was all these. There was okay. like a, the, the violist was always the person who had the machine. I think uh-huh. it was probably four forty. Okay. Uh, but I never even actually looked over. Okay. And then. Um, and you tuned viola first. Viola tuned everybody. Ah. Oh. Because it's the middle. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we always tune to the viola, tune uh-huh. pretty tight, but not not super, not as tight as I have done in the past, mm-hmm. but pretty tight fits so that it, you know, the C almost could match the E. Mm-hmm. And the Artemis Quartet is uh, famous for their incredible intonation. And yeah, so that's why, tell us, tell us your process, like, so, of course, tuning, like, did you tune just an A, or did you tune all your strings to each to other? To each other, all of them. You tuned every string to each other. Not on stage, never on but, stage. But, sure, right. Yeah. Um, so you, so you, okay. Every, so you every string, yeah. Okay. And then, let's say it's time to work on pitch, what what pr- process did you guys go through? Um, well, it's constant. Mm-hmm. It's a constant part of practicing, and it can be extremely frustrating. Uh-huh. Um, it can be frustrating because there are many different philosophies, and they're all legitimate philosophies. Mm-hmm. And even within, if you, even if you agree on the philosophy for that particular part, there's variations with which you're going to adhere to it. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to even agree on what you're trying to go for. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really complicated. It's super complicated. Uh, There's every... Some quartets like the Guarneri Quartet use intonation where they follow melodic intonation. They listen to mm-hmm. the melody. And the Artemis Quartet list didn't do that. They did everything... Harmonically. Perfectly like this. And so uh-huh. that means that every single note, which was on a different... Which is a different key or a right. different uh, even spelling of the same thing, was going to have a different intonation. Mm-hmm. And so you're going to do, uh, your major thirds are going to be small, your minor thirds going to be wide. And they wanted to have absolute, per- they didn't do expressive intonation. They absolute perfect intonation where you're going to have absolutely as few sound waves as possible. So we were always trying to minimize the sound waves and try to mm-hmm. get an absolutely pure sound. That's a great way to, to kind of cut through a lot of the, philosophical crap is to just say that you want to cut those extra sound waves out for yes, the purest but people some people don't agree right on what the kind of sound wave is and sometimes it's totally radical mm-hmm. and often you're completely not in tune with any of your strings right right so it's very difficult and some people like to write everything down mm-hmm. some people like to just feel the chord and know their function. You have to know your chord, you have to know your function. And not only that, but you also want to balance the amount of sound you're producing depending on your function. Whether you're the root, the third, fifth, or if you're doubled, if there's a third that's doubled, you want to half that amount of volume. It's just fascinating, frustrating, and endless. Endless, yeah. And when it works, it's a magical, yeah. amazing thing that resonates through everyone's chests mm-hmm. in the whole audience. And it's like no other... The, the ability to homogenize sound in a quartet it's like, it feels like no other mm-hmm. group. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. So, and and yeah. not only that, but then also width and speed of vibrato and how mm-hmm. that all affects what you're doing mm-hmm. and bow and all that stuff so it's just I mean intonation has to do with all of those things okay a couple more questions um, 
what what was your process for picking works um did did you each have a say or was it really up just your managers had to kind of work it out in europe it's much different Uh don't have to have any theme programming you don't have to have a i mean maybe i'm speaking out of turn maybe i just didn't even understand but you don't have to have a balanced program you don't have to have a living composer we would have programs that had two Mozarts with a Shostakovich in the middle. You know, we could play three Schumanns in one program and that would be it. I mean, that would be theme programming, I mm-hmm. suppose. Mm-hmm. But many, many times the programs would just be a Haydn we really like, a Mendelssohn, and a Beethoven. And it was more complex than that. They, we would look at the relationships of which keys different things were in. But that would be the that would be the priority. Like which pieces do we love, mm-hmm. and which ones fit well together. And you never had to worry about whether this would sell well to the audience, or if it could be um, programmed well, or or um, have any kind of you know. It, there was never that. It was just like wow, what's the best music? What's mm-hmm. your favorite music? And so I think everyone had equal say. I mean, huh. I, I was just happy to play whatever. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of stayed out of it. Yeah. Um, I was just thrilled to play any of this. And then once, how long, how long did you have to prepare your, your own part before you would Oh, show as long as you want. And, and then, because we knew the repertoire. Like how long, how far in like advance? Like a year, two years in advance. And... What was the expectation when you showed up oh, for the first rehearsal? Huge expectations. Uh-huh. Like concert concert ready. Wow. Absolutely concert ready. I mean, I wrote one blog post about what I do before I get to the first rehearsal. Marking my part, uh, doing historical research, um, listening to all the existing recordings that I can. Not only my own part, but then preparing knowing exactly how I feel about every single moment and at the same time not locking in any fingerings or bowing so that I go in I'm ready to change my bowings and fingering so I don't practice any particular bowing or fingering I practice mm-hmm. a whole variety of them so I can be ready to switch to anything any tempo but at the same time being absolutely convinced by what I believe about it mm-hmm. and being able to back that up with historical knowledge everyone else is coming in there at 100%. And mostly, when I was there, those other people had come in having played that particular piece Probably way more times thousands of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be thousands of wow. times. Wow. And so, that must have been... Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. What did I like most about being on stage with the Artemis? Um, I like that it was such polished and professional it was um, like impenetrable perfection I mean I suppose I could have screwed it up and it wouldn't have been Mm -hmm. but it was the mutual expectations Mm -hmm. were so ingrained and so absolute that no one had a choice but to be Ten times bigger than they ever could be by themselves, mm-hmm. and um, it was exciting to be part of of that, which was also married with um, extremely passionate and personal performance styles. So I felt that it was uh, not only precision, but it was very expressive, and we were all just drenched in sweat at all times it was just like couldn't even it was like whoa you smell bad like you couldn't even like be around anyone Mm -hmm. and you would look down the ground afterwards and and everyone would have like a ring of sweat droplets Mm. like it was like these halos of sweat around their around their uh area Mm. and um it was just an exciting it was exciting for someone to expect that of me Mm -hmm. And it was exciting to be able to deliver it. And I'm sure all four of us felt that same way. And um, 
it was demanding um, emotionally as much as physically. So that was very cool. And I guess I wouldn't say I would want anything different. It was extremely unique, and I, I'll never have that again. And um, it probably was unique because of that combination. Mm. So it was cool. Thank you for talking to us.